again welcome to our tutorial part 2 moment of force so in the previous class we have studied about the force type of motion and turning effect now today we will study about clockwise and anti clockwise moments in equilibrium of bodies now what is clockwise moment and anti clockwise moment now let's see clockwise according to the name only you can understand that clockwise and means if the force has a tendency to rotate the body in clockwise direction then the moment of force is called clockwise moment and when the force has a tendency to rotate the body in anti clockwise direction then the moment of force is called anti clockwise moment so here it is the important that is the moment of force now to know more about this let us go through this so here two weights one is w and another is w prime here w shows the clockwise moment as the force has the tendency to move it in the clockwise direction and here w prime shows the anti clockwise moment here the w prime has the tendency to move it in the anti clockwise direction very very important thing that whenever it shows the clockwise moment the sign must be negative and whenever it shows the anti clockwise moment the sign must be positive so, now let's take some common examples of moment of force in our daily life now see you can see the handle of a door always the handle of a door is provided near the free end of it not in the middle or not in near the hinge like this in a hand floor grinder always handle is provided near its rim and in case of a screw jack or a spanner always the handle is a long handle to tighten the knot and in order to turn a steering wheel a force is applied tangentially on the rim of the wheel here the important thing is the tangentially why it, it is uh, the force is applied tangentially means to produce more turning effect and uh, torque which is uh, the tangential force produce more torque and in a bicycle then the two foot pedals is at a larger distance from the axle on either side so all these things are is our day to day uh, life examples now if question will ask in this examples and give reason it is asking you can say only to increase the moment arm so that a small force can produce large turning effect means what as you know the relation previously all the already discussed in the previous class that the moment of force is directly proportional to the moment arm means if the moment arm is longer then moment of force is more then we can uh, small apply a small force and we can get a large turning effect that's why in the all these cases here we have done the longer moment arm longer so that a small force can produce large turning effect now go to the next thing equilibrium of bodies so what do you mean by equilibrium of bodies so as you know that a body is always surrounded by a large number of forces so now see when a large number of external forces acts on a body and the body does not change its state of rest or of uniform motion then it is said to be in equilibrium that means if that body is in the state of rest it continues its state of rest and if it is in uniform motion it continues in its motion now according to this equilibrium conditions are of two types one is static equilibrium and another one is dynamic equilibrium so to know more about the static and dynamic again i want to go to this uh, definitions here i have mentioned two states of a body one is the rest state another is the motion state so now the static equilibrium is in the case of rest state of rest and the dynamic equilibrium is in the case of uniform motion means see when a body remains in the state of rest under the influence of external forces then the body is said to be in static equilibrium means if a body are in uh, is in state of rest then it is called the static equilibrium because it does not change its state of rest like this in dynamic equilibrium when the body remains in the state of uniform motion under the influence of external forces it is said to be in dynamic equilibrium means if a body all already in motion then it does not stops or it continues its motion that is called the dynamic equilibrium now to know more about this let's go to no, i want to explain this so let us take an example of a book which is kept on a table as you know that it does not change its position whenever any external force is applied why because because it was or uh, it was balanced by two force 
uh, one is the downward force W, another one is the upward force R, which is known as the normal reaction force. These two forces are equal and opposite to each other, so they cancel each other. That means the net resultant force is zero, which does not allow the book to move. So the book does not change its state of rest, and this condition is known as the static equilibrium condition. Now take another example of a moving car. Or you can take the example of a uh, of an aeroplane uh, flying uh, on a certain height and a, a raindrop falling from the sky. Everywhere it continues its state of motion because here also two forces in upward and downward. One is the downward force W, another one is the normal reaction force R, which is equal and opposite to each other and they cancels each other. Another force is the backward force or frictional force or drag force. And the forward force is thrust. They cancel each other as they are equal and opposite to each other. So net resultant force is zero, and which allows the car to move in the motion only. This condition is known as the dynamic equilibrium condition. So already whatever I have explained there uh, in the uh, diagram that I have written here, and you can go through this same thing I have written here. Now. Oh, from all these explanations, we conclude with now in the two conditions. What are the conditions of the equilibrium? Very, very important thing. Here, the first condition is the algebraic sum of all the forces acting on a body must be zero. Means the net resultant force must be zero. zero. And the second thing is the algebraic sum of all the moment of force acting on a body about the point of rotation must be zero means it is about the rotational motion as you know that in case of rotational motion one axis is axis must be there so there also whatever the forces is acting on that body the sum of all the forces must be zero then only we can say that it is in the conditions of the equilibrium so now children uh, this is all about our uh, this part so the, in the next part we will study about the principle of moments and couple so please uh, if you like this video please like it subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification for latest videos